of the Lord is another day of blessing another day of favor another day of lifting another day of testimony it's another day of divine encounter with God it's another day of unusual visitation from the Lord it's another day of divine remembrance it's another day to celebrate the wonder walking power of God and I want to welcome all of you I believe you are ready I believe you are prepared I believe you are waiting to receive the blessing of a new day and it's sweet to begin a new day in the presence of the Lord I like us to still enjoy this music as we connect ourselves to the spirit of grace because something is about to happen right now in your life and the devil have lost the battle and over your life. Glory be to God. Let's enjoy this music. The one who watches me, mm. I put my confidence oh. in Jehovah Shabbat. Everywhere, 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 
Thank every one of you that are part of this broadcast today. I'm seeing God servant, the great apostle, Apostle Loma, wishing me 50th golden jubilee. I want to thank you. Since 12 a.m., I've been receiving a lot of messages, a lot of calls, a lot of people trying to get on me from different parts of the world. Uh, wishing me a 50th year on earth. You know, it's just a message of God. And guess what? The first hour of the day, I am spending it with you. I'm so excited because, you know, God has kept me. His mercy and His grace has kept me. God is faithful. God is loving. God is wonderful. If I take my mind back many years ago, when I was a young boy, I, I can count so many of my friends, very close and intimate friends. We worship together, we serve God together, we go to church together, we evangelize together, we conducted Holy Ghost baptism together for people, we conducted deliverance together for a number of people, but today, a number of them are no longer there. So it is, it is indeed a thing of joy for me to be alive and witness my 50th year on earth, still serving God, still fervent, still faithful and committed to God's work. I want to thank you for your prayers and I want to thank you for your kind wishes. Today, I want to build on what we did yesterday. And I'm so excited. You see, we have received a lot today. So much has been shall be released today. The, the word we heard in the first segment is so powerful. It's rema. It's revelation. And you see, there is power in the word. God carries the power of God, and the power of God breaks every yoke, whether yoke of sin, whether yoke of sickness, yoke of failure. Yoke of disappointment, yoke of hardship, frustration, the anointing is the yoke, and the anointing is in the word. That is what the Bible says. He sent his word, and his word heal, his word heal, his word heal, and his word also deliver God's children from destruction. So there is power in the word, and we have received the word. 
this 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 morning and and god still have a lot more for us i like you to be open-hearted because god is in the business of doing some great work for his children now yesterday we looked at a few scriptures and uh, i want us to celebrate the power of the revelation you see what makes the word of god so powerful is the revelation you can read the scripture you can actually quote it but if you don't have the, the rema and the revelation it does not actually add to your life it is the power of the word that makes the difference so when, when we read the word and we pray the word and we speak the word it carries a power it has effect it changes our situation and god put testimonies in our mouth and um, i just want to remind you that by this time exactly this period two thousand years ago jesus stepped into jerusalem he went into jerusalem just once and he went to jerusalem to fulfill scripture he went to jerusalem to shed his blood he knew he was going to die. Right there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wept and he cried to his father. The Bible said for the first time, Jesus prayed and called on his father and his father did not talk to him. The father kept quiet. He had to cry. He said, Lord, my, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said why have you forsaken me? Why are you not talking to me? Why are you keeping quiet? Why are you not responding to me? The Bible said God sent an angel to strengthen him. Do you know that Jesus went to the cross just for you? He went to the cross to pay for your sins. He went to the cross to carry your burden. He went to the cross to remove your troubles. He went to the cross. And he went there to shed blood. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sin and so jesus went to shed his blood on the cross in order to remit to to counsel to remove your sin that's why jesus went to the cross now i want you to understand that the power in the blood of Jesus is what wash, cleans, and purge us. It's the power in the blood that made us what we are today. Whatever we are today, whatever we have got today, is the power in the blood of Jesus that gave it to us. And so we saw yesterday that Jesus took a journey to the cross. He went there to pay for my sin and for your sin. I want us to look at the book of Leviticus chapter 17 and from verse 11. It says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Right? And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. I have given the blood for you to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Now, I have given blood for it to make atonement. When you sacrifice it, it has the capacity to atone for your problem your sin your whatever it, the blood will speak anytime you're about to kill a chicken or you are to kill a goat or you are to kill a cow the, the chicken will cry the goat will be the cow they are crying because they are about to die they are crying and when they cry and you kill them for your soul they cry they cry is the cry you are supposed to cry now when you make them cry and you kill them they have shed your tears they have cried your cry that is why each time they sing they get uh, 
uh, uh, a, a goat or a ram to, to make an atonement. They have to give the priest have to kill it. As the blood is spilling, that animal is now taking the place. And two people cannot be punished for one offense. Somebody commits an offense, he is punished for his offense. Should he have someone that come take him on bail? The, one, the offender goes free. If they look for the offender, they can't find the offender, they go for the one that took him on bail and he pays for the soul of the one that committed the offense. So the blood makes atonement. You can't kill the goat and also kill the man who brought the goat. You can't kill the cow and also kill the man who brought the cow to make atonement for his soul. So once you present a ram, a lamb, a goat, or whatever, it is going to die your death. And it's going to make the blood, it's going to make an atonement for you on the altar. Now, this is why Christians that understand the power of the altar and the power of sacrifice, they do unusual things. They break, they break ground. They achieve great feat because of the power of the blood. Now, God said to the Israelites, I have, he said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. So you must learn how to set up an altar. Today, one of my sons sent me an offering that he raised from his altar. And every end of the month, he gathers whatever offering he has, you know, a place on the altar in his prayer altar in his house. And he sends it to our to a higher altar in the church. And then I pray for him, I minister to him, and I, I stand, you know, on his behalf to speak to God. Now, you must understand the power of the altar. Just like Friday, by this Friday, you are going to experience the power of the altar. When you take that sacrifice, when you take that lamb or whatever, it is going to stand as an offering. And as it is offered, monetarily, it is going to be speaking for you. The life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul for it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood. You don't eat blood. When you eat blood, you're eating life. Dear, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. You don't have to eat blood. Verse 13. Now I see a lot of people when, when there is burial and they kill a cow. You see a lot of people, they, 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 they cook the blood of the cow and they go start eating. Why? We are not permitted to eat blood. Blood is to make atonement. Blood is to be poured on the earth. You don't eat blood. He said, and what's whoever among you that eat blood, whether you're a stranger or you are uh, a, 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 an Israeli, God said, don't ever eat blood. Don't. Blood is it that haunted and catcheth, in he that haunted and catcheth any beast. You know, he should not eat the blood. Rather, he should pour the blood thereof on the ground. Verse 14. For it is the life. For it is the life of the flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, You shall eat. You shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it, shall be put to death, shall be cut off. Whosoever eat blood shall be cut off. You are not permitted to eat blood. When you eat blood, you're eating life. And we are warned never to eat blood. Never to eat life. If I were not permitted to take the life of another. The Bible says, He that shed blood, by man shall his blood be shed. 
he that shed blood by man his blood shall be shed so we have been given strict warning on how to live our life we should live a covenant life we should live a life of fear for god we should not eat blood however we are permitted to eat only one blood why remember that life is in the blood so when you drink blood or eat blood you're eating life you are taking the life of the animal or the person so we we are warned by god never to eat any blood don't eat any blood blood of man blood of animals don't eat but you permit it to eat only one blood and that is the blood of jesus that is the blood of jesus and and, and you see many of us most children have not really taken seriously this scripture. We take things so light. We play with the scriptures. And, and when you play with the word of God, it has a way of playing with you. We are, we are, we are commanded to eat blood. And which blood are we permitted to eat? We are permitted to eat the blood of Jesus, which speaketh better things for us than the blood of Abel. And when you say you're a child of God, you must empower yourself with the blood. I'm going to bring up some few things here this morning. I'm going to show you some few things. And, uh, and that is going to, that's going to put you in a position of knowledge uh, to be able to, to, to address certain spiritual things in your life. Now, in the book of John chapter 6, uh, and uh, I read quickly uh, verse uh, 53. Uh, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. All right? He said, Whoso eateth my flesh, and drink my blood, hath eternal life. He that eat my flesh and drink my blood had eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the Father, the living Father, has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Wow. This is a deep scripture, and I can take one week to explain these few verses of scripture, because this is the core of the scripture, of, 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 of our faith. The power in the blood. Now, he said in verse, he said in verse, in verse in 55, for my flesh is meat in them, and my blood is drink in them. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. I dwell in him, and he in me. Please let me have a glass cup quickly. It is very expedient for you as a child of God to understand what the Bible is saying. And I'm going to show you that practically, because we're about to do some prophetic things. Especially as we as we as we narrow down to Friday, we're going to be doing some 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 stuff that will put the devil out of business in your life completely. Now look at verse fifty six. He that eats at my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats at me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your father did it manna, and I'm dead. He that eateth mouth, he that eateth, this bread shall live forever. My God. Now look at verse, verse 59. This thing said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard, heard this, said, This is an hard saying, and who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that the disciples, his own disciples murmured, his disciples murmured at it. They murmured, they grumbled. What is he talking about? He said unto them, Does this offend you? Sometimes you get offended when he has some revelation. He said, No, 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 no. I don't know what he's talking about. This is, this is, I don't believe this. 
You don't need to believe everything, but you must believe the word of God. If what I speak is the word of God, believe it. If it is my philosophy, you may not, you may choose not to believe. But if it is the word of God, you have to believe it. So some of the disciples murmured, they complained, and they said, We don't understand what he's saying. This is not right. And Jesus noticed it. And he said, Does this offend you? Verse 62. What and if you shall see the Son of Man? Ascend up where he was from. You know, he came from heaven. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who should betray him. Oh my God. Now, I want, to, I want to bring out a few things from this scripture here. The power of the blood of Jesus is so powerful. We are, we are warned never to eat any animal blood. Never to eat human blood. You don't eat human blood. You don't eat animal blood. It is only the blood of Jesus we, we are commanded to eat. And why? Because Jesus knew that we need his life. He came to give us his life. He gave us his life on the cross. He said, before he went to the cross, he told the disciples, get wine. He took the wine and blessed it. They got on living bread. He blessed it and he broke the bread and gave to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my flesh. And this you must eat if you must have my life in you. They took the flesh and they ate. He said, take my blood and drink. They took their blood and they drank. Now listen to me. It was ordinary wine that Jesus prayed over. And he said, this is my blood. That is why you must walk by faith. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Everything you do in Christianity, if it is not faith based, it is a sin. Because God responds to you according to your faith. So if your faith is not activated, you cannot even get the blessing of whatever you do in Christ. And so he said, take my, take, take, take this drink, drink is my blood. He said, take and eat, this is my flesh. They took it, they ate it, and they drank it. And by that, he has put his life in death. Why were they not to eat animal blood? Because it is the life of the animal. Why are we not to eat human blood? It is the human life that is in the blood. But we are only to eat the blood of Jesus. So he said, take my blood and eat. Take my flesh and eat. Glory be to God. Now, he said to them, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have my life. You have the lower life. I have the superior life. The life of man is inferior to the life of Christ. Now let me give you categories of, of blood. You have the blood of animals. You have fish have blood, I'm sure you know. But the blood of fish is a lower blood. The blood of goats and rams, they are lower blood. They cannot be compared to the blood of, of, of man. Alright? You can't compare the blood of a cow and the blood of a goat. They are not of the same quality. That's why they are not of the same price. Now, when, when you look at the, the blood of animal, it is it, it, the same color with the blood of man. That there are some animals that share almost the same quality of blood as that of man. For instance, a female ram. A female ram have almost the same quality of blood with human beings. You look at a dog, a dog fowl, it has almost the same quality of blood with, with man. That is why there are some animals in the Bible that God commanded should be used for certain level of sacrifices. You can't compare the blood of vulture with the blood of a female ram. Mm -mm. They are all animals, but there are different categories of what? Of life. And their life is in the blood. Now, there is an instruction of how 
God's children are to assess the throne, the grace of God when they come before him. So you have different qualities of life, different qualities of blood. You have the, 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 the inferior blood, you have the superior blood. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Now, let's look at the blood of animal. It is lower than the blood of man. The blood of man is lower than the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is, is superior. Now, when you even come to the blood of man, the blood of demon, you still have pure blood, clean blood. Let me give you an example. The blood of an old man, a 90-year-old man, 80-year-old man, cannot be compared with the blood of a 50-year or 40-year-old man. The blood of a 40-year-old man cannot be compared with the blood of a 15-year or 10-year-old child. Mm -mm. And then the blood of 10-year-old child cannot be compared with the blood of a one-month-old child. The blood of a one-day, one-month-old child cannot be compared with the blood of one-day-old child. And the blood of one day old child cannot be compared with the blood of a child that is yet in the womb that is not yet born. That is why some ritualists, when they want to perform some level of rituals, they go for pregnant woman that is due to deliver. They open the woman and take out the unborn child. Use the child for some strong sacrifice, for some strong work because they want undiluted blood. Blood that have not by itself committed any sin. So even among the blood of men, there are different qualities of blood. Even sometimes God will say, use a one-day-old lamb. Use a, 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 a one-month-old lamb in certain prophetic prayers and sacrifices. Because you see, the older you are on earth, the more sin you commit. A, a, a new arrival to the earth as a child, oh, cannot be compared to a man that have lived on earth done all kinds of terrible and wicked, wicked and abominable things. Now that's what Jesus said, hey, in your battle for survival on earth, you need to eat my own flesh and drink my blood. When you eat my flesh and drink my blood, my life is mixed with you. This is your life. You have this low life, this life that is prone to sickness, this life that is prone to death, this life that is prone to frustration. This life that is prone to, to mosquito bite and all kind of stuff. This is a low life. He said, I have a superior life. I have a clean life. I have a better and a bigger life. When you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I give you my life and I take your life. I give you my life, my superior life, and I take your life. I give you my life of righteousness. I take your life of sickness. I give you my life of purity. And I take your life of sin. I know you can't help yourself. So when you drink my, 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 my blood, you are taking my superior life. And I am taking your own inferior life. He said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have life in you. My life is not in you. Now, what kind of life is he talking about? These guys are already alive. They exist. But what he's talking about is the Zoe life. The life of God. The life. He gave him that blood, that, that life. He breathed on him. And the Bible said, Adam became a living soul. And Jesus came as the second Adam. He came with a superior life. The, 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 the life of cleanliness without sin. The life of purity. That's the life he came with. He said, you are a lower being. I want to give you my own life and take your own life. I want to take your own sickness, your affliction, your poverty, and give you my life. My life of holiness and purity. The Bible said that though he was God, he became man. He chose to be a man and he died as a man just to take you to the realm of God. That's why he said we are gods and we are all the children of the Most High. Then because we don't know it, he said we will die like ordinary men. So when you understand the power in the blood of Jesus, that he actually gave you this life. And this life can be renewed when you take communion. That is why he said, take the blood as often as you can in remembrance of me. 
the remembrance of all that I did for you on the cross. Take the blood. Eat the blood. Do it as often as you can. So you can be spiritually fortified. So you can be spiritually indestructible. So you can be spiritually untouchable. Take my blood. Another thing I want to show you. Witches and wizards, they trade on blood. Before they go for their operation, they get themselves drunken with the blood of men. The blood of women. Sometimes you see that you wake up, you see lacerations on your body. You see some mark on your body. Where did the mark came from? While you were sleeping, the enemy who has torn himself to whatever form enters your room, lacerates your body and suck your blood. You wake up in the morning, you are so tired, you are so weak, you become sickly because they have feasted on your blood. Listen to me. You need a higher life. You need the higher blood. So Jesus said, for you to be afloat, for you to keep enjoying the blessing that I brought, that I took to Calvary, take this communion as often as you can. As you keep taking my blood, you keep having my life, refreshing, you keep building up, you keep, you keep, you keep gaining height, dominion and authority. If witches need blood to be strong in oppression, if they eat blood to fly, you also need blood to fly. <clears throat> you need blood, sorry, to fly. <clears throat> that is why, as a child of God, you must constantly feast on the blood of Jesus. Don't let, anytime you hear that it's coming on, don't let it pass you by. Like this Friday, the worst mistake you make is to miss the coming on. When you miss it, it may take you one year to regain it. So prepare yourself for the communion on Friday. And every day of your life, prepare yourself to live the blood life. Live the blood life. There are certain curses that must be destroyed, but not just by ordinary prayer. Praying according to knowledge and the communion. Because you see, what happened in your bloodline affects you. There are some people that come from a very terrible blood lineage, and it affects them. What affects their father, their great grandfather, you know, is still affecting them because of the bloodline. When you take the blood of Jesus, when you take the communion, you begin to live according to the blood lineage of Christ. You begin to walk in that dominion. All those things that, 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 that rule and control your life, your father, your great-grandfather, and your generation can no longer control you. This is why the blood must be taken seriously. Now, if witches need blood to survive, hey, you need the blood of Jesus to do better things. If the flight at the three feet above sea level, you can fly hundred feet above sea level with the power of the blood of Jesus. Oh, my time is running out, <laughs> and I'm going to just be closing. But I want to show you something. That is a scripture I wanted to show you the other day, but yesterday, but somehow I couldn't show you. I think I have just uh, uh, four minutes left. Let me see whether I can open it and then just make mention of it tomorrow, God willing, and we just talk about it. In the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9 from verse, uh, uh, from verse 9 to 11. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon uh, an ass and upon the cord, the fowl of an ass. Verse 10. He said, And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. Turn ye to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Oh my God. I wish I had the time to exegete this scripture and bring out the holy from this scripture so you understand what the blood of Jesus Christ did for us and how you can daily enjoy it. How you can daily, how you can get double for your trouble. You get double for your troubles through the blood of Jesus. He said, Jesus went to Jerusalem, riding upon an ass. He went there to shave his blood. Why did he shave his blood? Verse 11. He said, as for thee, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. 
There are many prisoners today. Asha. Do you know who a prisoner is? A prisoner is a bound man and woman under the dictate of another. Every prisoner has lost liberty. He is living by the mercy of the prison warders. A prisoner has no choice. A prisoner has no... You, you live by people's dictate. You don't have your own life to live. People live your life for you. They tell you when to come out. They tell you when to eat. They tell you when to go for recreation. They tell you when to go and clear grass. They tell you when to go and sleep. A man like you controls your life because you are a prisoner. Hey! Hmm. There are many prisoners today. They are in church every day, but you are a prisoner. You want to marry, you can't get married. Because your enemy have not released your marriage. You want to do good business and good, get good money, but they have tied your business. You want to get a good job, you can't get it. A prisoner is limited. A prisoner is punctuated. A prisoner is frustrated. A prisoner lives by the mercy of another who they put in charge of him. Who is in charge of your life? Who caused the shot for your life? Who decides how you live your life? Who, who is controlling you? Who is ruling you? Jesus went to Jerusalem. He said, as for thee, by the blood of thy covenant, this blood of the covenant I am shedding, all right, is to bring you out of your prison house. The Bible says Satan does not open the door of his prisoners. Anyone devil takes prison, he captive, he does not open the door. He keeps him there forever. But Jesus came to open the prison house, to break the chain, and to bring out his children from limitation, from their pain and their shame. He came and he paid. You can't continue in prison when the price has been paid for you. You have completed your prison term. When Jesus came and died, you can't continue in that prison. The yoke is broken. The chain is broken. You got to fly out of that prison house and live your life of liberty, your life of freedom, your life of favor. I feel this thing all over me right now. But I believe that we're going to continue tomorrow, God's willing. Uh, I want you to understand that you can't live your life as dictated by the devil. No witch or wizard can dictate your life. No enemy or progress can dictate for you. No witch doctor can dictate for you. You cannot be a slave to the devil. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I speak liberty. I speak freedom. I speak freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from death. Freedom from sickness. Everyone experiencing a prison life, you know, uh, uh, experience. I break the prison house and I get you out. Come out right now. Come out from that life of, of, of pain. That regimented life. I bring you out of it. I set you free. I lose you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, sorry, my time is up and I'm going to stop. I wanted to be ready for tomorrow and prepare for the Passover. I love you big time. God bless you. 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 I love you. I love you. I love you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.